Welcome back to One Bills Live. John Murphy, Steve Tasker, and a special guest right in the middle here, head coach of the local team, the Indianapolis Colts. Frank Reich is with us. Frank, good to see you. How you Mark, been? Mark, always great to be good with to you see guys. You know this guy? Yeah. Nice come on, He's man. the best right here. <laughs> He's all right. I'm, you, this guy's still my idol after yeah. all these years. <laughs> yeah. Why would that be? <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's no. Not. It's just I, saying it. I used to be out in the field with him, and I'd, I'd every day I'd walk off the field, and I'd say, that right there is one of the best football players I've ever been around. You want, to keep, you want him to keep going? This is what you like? This is I'll be the, quiet. Let him, <laughs> let him talk himself into a hole he can't get out of. Yeah. Hard to imagine, but you're going into your third season as coach of the Colts. I mean, it's just hard to believe you've been here two years already. It is hard to believe. And I was joking over there, 2020, uh, came in the league in 85, so 35 years of being around this league. But what's exciting is it just keeps getting better and more fun and exciting. You know, more game gets bigger, better, more fans, more media. Uh, it's good. I mean, it's fun to be a part of it. And right. uh, third year now with the Colts, great ownership, you know, great players, team, coaches. Uh, I, you know, I have to pinch myself. Yeah, we we talked even when we were playing how the game changed incrementally every year and it's evolved to the point where it is now. It's, it is amazing where the game is now. It's almost you see these offenses, they say there's nothing new under the sun. It's still 11 on 11. But yeah. It's a really creative game these days, off, particularly offense. I don't know about defense, but offensively, it's very creative still with everything that they're doing, and it continues to go that, that way. I think you have to, Steve, because, right, there's so much technology today, so you have all this data, all this information that we have at our hands. So if you don't change it up, I right. got you I got you wired. Right. You know, I got, I got mounds of information that I, I can get you wired. So you got to do give unscouted looks. You got to give things that they haven't seen before, little twists, tweaks to things to keep people off balance. Right. You know what we never talk about on our show, and everybody knows your connection to Western New York, but your offensive coordinator, Nick Sirianni, is a Jamestown guy. What role does he play in, in getting those little tricks and twists going for the offense? A massive role. Yeah. I mean, Nick is, you know, Nick to me is one of the bright, young offensive minds of this league uh there's when i got hired as the head coach i told chris ballard um i know everybody on the staff is important but there's one guy i gotta get i gotta get nick seriani um and he was the receiver coach um in san diego in, in san diego at the time or la at the time LA, yeah. and so and i didn't think i was going to be able to get him out of there and uh you know kudos to anthony lynn uh, because he knew, you know, he knows he got a good coach in Nick, but he didn't want to hold Nick back from that. They could have kept him, and Tom Telesco and, and Anthony Lynn were gracious enough to, hey, let Nick have an opportunity. They know he's a young, rising star, so I'm glad we got him. Did that, you know Nick went to basketball camp with our producer, Jay Harris? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, tell the athletic. Nick tells me he was a pretty good basketball player, so I'm trusting him. Oh, okay. uh, no. <laughs> um, and Nick is one of those guys, and, and i got to ask you about this too, because just like Anthony Lynn did for you, you're, you know, we saw it a little bit in Buffalo where you get guys who interview for yeah. Coach Yards. Our offensive coordinator was in one of the finalists for the Cleveland job. And what has, you know, and Nick has been for years one of the guys who's been on the rise. And on now. the rise, yeah. Um, and if any, there was, if there was ever a year for you guys to prove your medal, it was finding out a week before the regular season yeah. starts that Andrew Luck retires. I mean, you guys, I mean, you had to like, close the door of the bunker and kind of <laughs> twist it tight and it kind of uh, what was your first reaction and what did you and Nick talk about how you were going to approach it certainly you gave Jacoby yeah. the, the extension and got him tied up but w what's your mindset well there was two things that two things that we're thinking you know first of all you know you're just a little bit in shock right. I mean and I mean, you understand, you know, when you really sit down and talk with Andrew and you hear right. and you hear him, you, you understand. You wish him the best. And you wish him the best. And you say, you understand, and you've got to make the decision that's right for you and your family. And, and you respect that, and, and that's just the way it is. And it's, there's never a good time for that. Right. Um, but then, so that's one thing you think. Well, the other thing you think is, let's go. I mean, you know, and I think it was really a credit to our players, our coaches, that coming on the heels of that news that we started out the season as Murph and I were talking, you know, right You're before five the, and two, we're right? five and two. I mean, who would have ever thought we would have been five and two after getting that news um, a couple of weeks before the season. Uh, the unfortunate thing was we weren't able to sustain that. We ran out of gas. So that's what we got to get corrected. What went well in that start? I mean, six, six wins after 10 games you were still, you had to go in 10 weeks into the season. Yeah. What did, did you, was everything totally different than you planned going into the season or did you just, no, up. we were running the ball well, yeah. you know, running the ball well, um, making some plays on offense and, and, and holding down, you know, playing really good defense, um, putting pressure on the quarterback, minimizing big plays. You know, down the stretch what happened, Murph, was 
on offense, we got we got pretty weak in the passing game. We really struggled in the passing game in the latter part of the season. And then on defense, our struggle was we probably gave up a few more big plays than we gave up in the first half of the year. And you still get in. We've had this conversation, both Mike Tan Tannenbaum and Murph and I in, in, in Buffalo and then around the league, is these games come down to a handful of plays. And there are teams that just you get into a spot or a stretch where you, consistently you lose three or four plays in the game and it has a ripple effect that, cause you for the loss and other every other play every other you know one of the 98 percent of the plays is yeah is fine but you lose a handful of plays and it costs you the game no you're exactly right and there was a stat i don't remember it right now but so we were five and two and all the games i think were decided by one score or less and then uh and so we had some stack going that we were doing well and and but as the year went on it was that's what it was and then we started losing some of those close games to your point it right. just well what happened well i don't know it was just two or three plays Tips pass or an incomplete pass yeah. where we had a guy open yeah and that's yeah. it and you, and you go home with the loss and, and and so one of the things you learn through that is hey yeah you got to learn how to win those close games and make those plays that you need to make but the other thing you learn and i always thought marv levy was was great at this um you know he used to always say this thing about Hey, you, you got to win the games that you're really, you know, so whenever we played, you know, at home, it was like, you better dominate. Right. You know, it shouldn't come down to one score. Right. You know what I mean? Don't make it come down Marv to Marv would say that? Yeah. Would I he? mean, he, he was always, hey, you got to win the games. You got to win the games that you're supposed to win. So, you know, for us at home, that was, you're going to go 8-0 at home. Right. And you look at those good years that we had, and we were either 8-0, 7-1 at home, or maybe 6-2 and two when you were. Yeah. It was either 8-0 or 7-1. Right. And, uh, and then if you just split, on the road, you're, that's your season. You're 12 yeah, and four. Yeah, right. You had Bobby Ross at Maryland, right? Yes. And Marv in the NFL. Do yes. you find yourself referring back to like lessons learned from those two? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. All the times, you know, Marv, especially because I had Marv for so long, um, and it was more recent. I still talk to him. I mean, I try to call him a couple times a year, and you know, just love and respect Marv. And I'm still trying to get him to come to a game. He's he's been close a couple times of he and Fran coming down to a game. But hopefully this will be the year I'll get him to come down to Lucas Oil. Get the Cubs to play down here. It'll shoot down here in a I second, know. right? <laughs> He's crazy about the Cubs. Well, so what's your thought process? What are the – just a thumbnail of the Indianapolis Colts at this scouting combine and where you sit and what you're looking at? You know, we got – we, you, it's all about competition. Right. So, you know, making the team better. So at every position, both sides of the ball – special teams you know how do we piece together what what are we looking you know the unique thing is hey here's who we are offensively what pieces are we missing as an offense what do we like to do what fits you know defensively who are we uh identity wise schematically wise what pieces are we missing and then but you never know how it's all going to play out that's the unknown factor so you got to have multiple contingency plans so you start to figure that all out here you uh you coached in San Diego for a couple of years, had a great relationship with Philip Rivers. He's a free agent now. You've seen him, and you told me one time, and I've referred to it a number of times, in pass protection, Philip is a set apart. Yeah. The guy is protect. He knows what's happening no doubt. up front of him. And he's a real asset to his offensive line, even if they're not as gifted as you want him to be. He's out of there on the free agent market. What are your thoughts about him, where he could play, where he could land, what he still offers a team at this? Because you've seen him when he was – four years ago when he's still in his prime maybe, or now right. when he's 38. Right. Um, what's he bring to the table? What's the team going to get with him? And do you think he can still do it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's actually, for me, I haven't been with him. It's, it's fun to think about there. But I, I, but I, ha I at this point, I'm not even allowing myself to go there. Right. Um, you know, th that's a process that we as a team are going through, you know, position by position. Because w what I've learned is, hey, Jacoby's our quarterback. Um, you know, does that mean – I was saying over there on the podium that in this league, there's very few guys that have the luxury of saying, hey, I'm a lock. I don't have to worry about competition. They're not going to bring anybody to compete. Well, there's not many guys that have that luxury. So we'll look at every position. I don't know how that will all play out, but what I know right now is I'm focused on how to get our guys better. Right. And then when the likes of if, – if at any point in any other position out there, they come on our team, then they become our guys. I mean right. – for the media, I re I re that's all fun to talk about. But for us, it's personal and family inside. Right. So until that guy's in the door, we kind of. Plus, particularly in a room like this, where you got we've been talking like you got 300 guys here, you get to pick what seven of them. Yeah. And who who knows, you know, who the last guys you pick are picked over, you know, right? Yeah. So, um, you 
you have to deal in absolutes. You know Jacoby Brissett's on your roster. That's right. Well, let's get him as good as we can get. And if something else comes along to compete with him, okay. That's right. But right now, you got to deal in absolutes. And this isn't absolute at all. Yeah, and like for your case in point, um, there have been in the previous two years, uh, I was telling the guys over there, um, we had a couple of free agents identified that we were going to go after. We thought, we're going to get these guys. And we think we have the resources to get them. It's going to play out. We think we can get them. And then something crazy happens. Yeah, we don't so get them. You don't get them. <laughs> and so, and I was telling our, our, our local reporters over there that actually in both of those scenarios, when we look back on it now, it's a good thing we didn't get them. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> You know, it, it doesn't make any sense for us to say, hey, we're all going to put our eggs in on this basket. Yeah. There's too many factors. Oh, my gosh. So you just take it day by day. Right. One thing you seem to have with the, the Indianapolis Colts is a pretty good offensive line, huh? And most of them coming back. What's Costanzo's Yeah, situation? he's coming back. Is so, coming? you know, I mean, Chris just announced that today or earlier that he's coming back. That's huge news, right? right. Last year we had all five starters start 16 games. Yeah. That That's doesn't happen. That's hard to do. That's yeah. hard to do. It doesn't happen. I was joking with the guys over there. Um, hey, well, why did he come back? Well, he didn't want that. He had four guys. You got a string of 16 games in a row, and now you're just going to walk away and retire. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, said so those other four guys. Are, hey, you got to talk back. to him again. Right. They'll right. never right. talk to him again. That's right. <laughs> so. Right. Well, that's a good th- a block to build on, though, right? An offensive line like that. No, with- and as you guys know, in the past game, so when you got a left tackle who you're locked down, and you know, if you want to put pressure on a defense, you know, you got to in the past game well, you got to be able to free release that back every now and then right. and when you got a guy left tackle over there that you know that can handle whoever it is over there you don't have to chip help that's a big deal where's the hit league heading you got the you know we're not the CBA experts by any stretch of the imagination but for football side of it you had the challenge, the OPI DPI challenge this year which was i don't know it was it yeah. didn't work right it didn't look like anyway they're not happy with it they've said that already where's the league headed do you think with coaches' challenges, with replay, and and also the on the field rules that may change this year? You know what? You know what I thought was good about last year, at least the way it played out. I mean, at least we took a step. Where you know we can argue, yeah. we can argue what worked about it, what right. didn't work about it. So you can change like, it again. Yeah, you can change it again, or you can take it away. You know, right. whatever. Um, but uh, you know, I think the intent was right. You know, so we'll go back to the league meetings. It'll be fun. You know, to get all. It's always fun those league meetings. You know, to get all 32 head coaches in there talking about that you know and then you get and then they take it to the competition committee and then it just kind of plays out so what I've learned in a few short years I've been a head coach is hey okay I have a small little voice in that 32 thing you know you, you get let your opinion known and then you pretty much just say however it plays out I will play ball with whatever they say what's Frank Wright going to bring the competition to me and say hey we need to do this what are you going to say no, I mean, it's, it's all collaborative effort. So when it gets on the discussion of OPI, DPI. I, I know. Um, Let's make you commissioner for like, five <laughs> And I wouldn't vote for you in that capacity. No. <laughs> I'd vote ser- for you. Yeah, right, you're right. Thanks. I appreciate it. But seriously, what do you think needs to happen at any level, even off the field, on the field, scheduling in the off season, Or what's something that maybe is a thorn in your side that makes it tough to be a head coach or do the things you want to do? Yeah, Steve, you know me. I mean, I'm, a, um, you know, not that I'm. Not that I'm not picky, and because I am, and uh, but and always want to get better. But uh, I think the game is in pretty good condition, yeah. and I feel a lot of confidence in the structure, the competition committee. That you know, we got good people represented. You know, they're getting our opinions. I'm so focused on how we're going to win our opening game, <laughs> yeah. and who we're and who we're going to draft out of these guys. Right. You know. Um, when we get to that competition committee, I kind of compartmentalize it like, hey, we have our time. We, we met about OPI, DPI. We submitted our opinions. We, here's, hey, do you have any other suggestions? They take all those in. We've sent them in. I trust them. Just tell me what we're going to do, and we'll get it done. Frank, should, we, thanks, man. We should let our listeners know you're making your usual visit, springtime visit to Buffalo, May 9th this year for the Call to Courage Awards breakfast, right? Yeah. Tell us about, how many yeah. years? 20? This years? is 19, 19, 19 or wow. 20. Yeah. Very excited. Coach McDermott will be there. Yeah, so um, I talked to him uh, a couple weeks ago on the phone. He was gracious enough to lock it down, you know. Yeah. And, and, it's, and I guess it's not a secret. Nick Foles. Nick Foles, I mean, is going to be the award winner. Awesome. So very excited about that. Nick will do a great job. Obviously, he's got a unique story. So I'm excited for all the people of Western New York to be able to get an up-close, um, personal look at Nick and hear his story.
We'll have more information on that as we get closer, but it is Saturday, May 9th. Frank's Call to Courage Awards Breakfast in Buffalo. Frank, good to see you, as Thanks, always. Mark. Thank you okay. very much. Good to see you, sweetness. Thanks, Take Steve. care. <laughs> Frank Wright joining us here on uh, One Bills Live, presented by Kaleida Health from the Indianapolis Combine, the NFL Combine in Indy. This is Buffalo Bills Radio.